So 75 hard seems to be a real popular thing, especially amongst the entrepreneurial space and, and real estate I've seen. I know I've seen a lot of it. So I did it about a year or so ago. So I want to break down what it's like after and how it's terrible for your long game. By the way, my name's Chad Leonberg and I've helped hundreds of agents build six-figure businesses in real estate with our Shark Partner program. If you're interested, hit me up at the contact info below. The good thing about 75 Hard is the mental toughness aspect. It definitely helps see if you can handle more than you currently can for a period of time. And over that period of time, you know, see if you can be disciplined. It's bad for long-term, but I'll show you what I'm doing uh, long-term at the end of this video. But ultimately, you know, for me, I was in a spot where I just slowly, slowly, slowly was just ignoring elements of my health, whether it's, you know, diet, uh, working out, getting fit, and um, yeah, mental health for sure as well. And I think um, for me, how I viewed it, and I think this is that it is good for that, is if you're if you're coming from a space of not focused, right, and you need to get to this middle ground where like you're focused on your health, but not like crazy like obsessed with it right maybe you might need a slap in this direction all the way over here and then when you come out of it you align here or at least that was my theory when I started this now doing it definitely there that's the hardest part is the mental toughness of doing things that you don't want to do and just doing them anyway <laughs> uh, there were many nights through the journey where you know it was 11 11 30 at night and I still had to get a workout in we had friends over at the house and I went to the gym or went on a run or did did various things uh, so you know the hardest part for me was planning the workouts, like fitting them in my schedule, two 45 minutes. It's like one to plan them and then two to actually, you know, all right, I said I'd work out tonight after we went to the beach all day and now I got to go do it. And it's another thing to actually do it. So the two workouts, planning and then actually committing to the plan that you made is really tough. Um, you know, obviously fitting everything else in is hard as well. For me, the water was a non-issue. I drink a lot of water, um, so that was that was really not a problem. Uh, the no alcohol, I've went on much more of a journey since then, but at the time I did want to prove to myself that I could go two and a half months without drinking. At the time we drank probably three nights a week, give or take. Um, so, you know, really from, I still did all the things that involved drinking. I went to parties where everybody was drinking. I went to some uh, sporting events and, you know, um, watch parties and different things like that. And, um, you know, that's where it's toughest, but you do learn that you can actually do the same thing thing without the alcohol is what I learned over that course of that, that period of time. Uh, so it, it was good to see, but you know, coming back, looking at everything, um, the reading 10 pages a day was more of just like, oh, you just get it in. It wasn't too intense. It's the two workouts a day for 45 minutes, finding an hour and a half every single day um, and then doing the action in the time you allotted, even if it, you know, especially if it's at a weird hour, if you're like, you know what, I'll just get it in tonight. Well, then that becomes really hard um, whenever you actually get there and go, oh, uh, sorry, friends, I'm going to go do my workout. <laughs> So it's definitely a tough one. So the, the toughest thing mentally is to figure out the two 45 minute workouts. So even though 75 hard was very good for mental strength, the discipline, the toughness that it requires to get through it, uh, long term it's terrible because what happens is it leads to burnout. Um, you do it for 75 days and then when you're done, you found that end point and you feel like you've arrived and that's not the game of you know, your health and fitness. It's a journey. It, it never, the destination never really, you know, you never really arrive at it until ultimately at your end. When you meet your end in life, that's when you've stopped having to worry about your health and fitness. Uh, so, you know, it, it's something that, that really never ends. And with 75 a hard ending, you know, for me personally, the, those next, you know, it's like, yeah, you can go from working out two times a day, seven days a week to maybe, you know, three times a week or four times a week. And that's manageable. <laughs> but what happens is you don't have the accountability in place that you do during 75 hard. So it tends to get harder and harder and harder. Yeah. So eventually I got to the point for, so for me, it ended in about June. Um, I was able to then go to a conference and start drinking again and start eating, you know, get off my diet for me. I was avoiding bread. What happened over the coming months was just little increments back towards where I was. And ultimately, especially when the holidays came around, I lost all of the frequency of working out, all of the correct diet stuff, all the stuff completely. Um, really, it's because I didn't have any accountability of that 75 hard metric. 
Uh, so for me, this this is why I felt that it was you know I was so burnt out and so tired you know, of, of doing that. Uh, I will say one hack to help through the process was uh, doing yoga. Actually, yoga was a, a newfound uh, enjoyment. Um, there really is well, you need you need recovery, and yoga is a workout that you can do that I felt like I still got recovery in. So um, that was a big takeaway from doing seventy five hard was finding out that I actually liked uh, yoga. What I ultimately realized, though, after going through that period of summer and then the holidays where I completely got off track, and you know what I set out to do, get healthier, kind of lost everything that I gained during that 75 hard period was I learned that I just had to suck it up and have real accountability metrics that I could do every day, every week, every month, forever. So what I decided to do was suck it up and log my food. Logging my food and actually staying accountable to you know the metrics that I needed to be in on there, um, that has helped me keep a diet for six months going strong that I've progressively lost about uh, 1% of body weight per week to get to my goal weight. So having that accountability was the key and learning, you know, a calorie deficit and then a maintenance phase and then, you know, a gaining phase and just learning the differences there and then setting my macros and all that good stuff. Uh, so I had accountability to do that. That's helped me stay in the diet game long term. Now working out, I've just committed to three times a week at the gym and one to two cardio kind of trips like bike rides and runs and just kind of fun things uh, outside. You know, not seven days a week, not crazy amounts, just something that I can keep in touch with. And this has been easy to stay consistent with because it fits around my lifestyle. So I had to find a plan that I knew I couldn't quit for good. And I'm still very early on in that plan. I'm probably about six months in and definitely there's slight alterations here and there, but it's more of the mindset of getting, you know, 1% better every day, as opposed to just going on this huge sprint that in my opinion, when you go on that crazy sprint, you're going to burn out and put it all back to where it was, or at least that's what happened to me after that. So long term, I think it's much better to find something you commit to every single day or, or at least every week, every month, you know, a rhythm that will work for you that does get results that you want, you know, and has specific measurable kind of actionable things to follow. And I think that this has made it a lot less stressful and a lot more exciting because now I have so much more control. Uh, the biggest thing I had to learn though was staying consistent with the number of calorie intake that I have and not having huge spikes and huge drops and consistent with the level of workouts, not having huge spikes and huge drops. So it really just came down to finding a rhythm that I can repeat regularly. So. Uh, in the end, I guess I'm thankful 75 Hard awakened me in my mind to some of the, the awareness around this, but I think ultimately that having a stable rhythm that you can follow for the rest of your life is what you should be looking a lot more towards. Uh, so that's, that's my takeaway from doing it. Um, I know that normally I have a lot of real estate related content, so this is a little different, but I think that it's common in the space to hear, you might've heard of 75 Hard, and if you haven't, well, there you go. <laughs> you can check it out. But I ultimately don't heavily recommend it because I think it's another potential magic pill that you might have in your mind. If I do this, I will achieve the results because this is the magic pill. And really what gets you the magic, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, is discipline. So staying disciplined to a rhythm that's not going to kill you that you can do for the rest of your life and enjoying the process. Just like all my other content, it's the same principle. So I know it's about health and fitness and not real estate related, but I just wanted to share that because I see so much of 75 hard, especially in the real estate space and having been coaxed into it from seeing it around myself, uh, it's definitely not the path I found to be sustainable uh, for me. So granted, I'm still in my journey. We'll see where it goes. It definitely never ends. But so far, um, I'm on about a sixth, seventh month um, in this new rhythm, and it has been, I could do this forever. <laughs> so, uh, my suggestion is to find a rhythm that works long term. Don't commit to the fad diets and the fad trends and the fad workouts. Um, have some accountability towards your actions period, forever, own up to what you're doing and find a rhythm that works for you to stay healthy moving forward. So I hope that was helpful. We'll see you on the next one.